الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد بتف الله I thought it would be beneficial to talk about some of the stories and some of the stories of my my old companions to alhamdulillah becoming reacquainted with them by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just to share with you and chronicle really some of our history some of our stories you know how we came to Islam so I'm hoping to have several sittings with several different brothers who we I have history with we go way back and just to talk a little bit about how how we came to Islam or you know and and, and some of our old war stories if you will and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a source of benefit and khair so this is my brother Ali Abdurrahim hafizallahu ta'ala we go back may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi hayakallah hayakallah ali so we'll just jump right into it without uh, getting into too much else, you know, how did you come to Islam? What, what, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor you to come to Islam? What was the path, you know? Everyone has a different story to tell, so let's hear yours and chronicle it and reflect. Well, the, first, the first thing is I was, I was born and raised a Christian. No. And so I was a Christian who went to church three days a week. Hmm. Wednesday Bible study, Friday youth night, and Sunday church. And so I guess my path towards Islam was in a Bible study, actually, mm. uh, when I was 14 years old. And so what happened was I found, I can't remember which verse it was, it was so long ago, but I found two verses that contradict each other. SubhanAllah. So I brought it to the, the youth leader who mm. was supposed to be a Bible scholar. And I asked him, so, so what is this? How come it says this here and it says that over there? Mm. And he looked at it and he said, well... I didn't really know that that was in the Bible in the first place. It, isn't that strange? Mm. And I just thought, lay, 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 lay. <laughs> kind of cool. how do you not know your book? You know. Yeah. And then, you know, I just wrote it off, and he came up to me because he saw the, the doubts in my face. Yeah. You know, I was just a fourteen-year-old kid. Mm. And he said, you know, you just gotta have faith. Mm. And to me, as a fourteen-year-old young man, mm. that was unacceptable. I don't, yeah. don't want to just have faith. Yeah. I want to believe. I want mm. something to. Mm. So long story short, mm. I got I fell in with the wrong crowd, mm. did a little bit of dirt, mm. and I found myself in a maximum state penitentiary. Okay. A ma- maximum security. Penitentiary. Yeah, yeah. And so I went in as basically not really a Christian, not really an atheist. Just I really wasn't looking for anything. Mm-hmm. So uh, a few months later, when I was out at yard. Uh, well, out on yard. Explain out, that for some at, of the youngsters well, who might not know. Out on yard is, you know, you, you get an hour or... So, it depends on what kind of security you are. Okay, okay. Uh, so I was I was maxed out at the time. Mm. And uh, so the yard is a place where you, you walk the track. Mm. Everybody's out there, mm. you know, enjoy the sunshine. Okay. Uh, get your exercise, jump mm. on the white weight pile. Mm. And so at that point, I was pretty much alone. Mm. I, I was new. I was a new fish. Okay. <coughs> and, new fish uh, meaning? New fish means new convict. New, okay, new you convict. Okay, you just arrived. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the, I saw this this guy <laughs> with, a, with a mustache, one of those long mm. mustaches like that. No yeah. beard. Yeah. He started, so we all go in a circle around mm. the track. Yeah. And he cut the track in half mm. and was headed towards me. SubhanAllah. So... I had made a, a toothbrush yeah. shank that yeah. I always brought onto the yard yeah. just in case I had melted it down and rubbed it on the floor. Uh. Uh, so he, he came to me and uh, so what he did was he came straight for me so I thought, what's going on? Mm. Is this guy about to jump me? Is he going to you know do something? Yeah. So he approached me and said, hey, I noticed that you were alone. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. Mm. And I really don't talk. Yeah. And I, it was really strange for me. Yeah. It's like, I, I really want to tell you about something. Mm. Just, just give me five minutes. If you don't Allah like what I say, mm. that's fine. And so what happened is 
he said, I want to teach you a little bit about Islam. Wow, alhamdulillah, and I right said, to the core. I don't even know what that is. You yeah. have to explain everything. I've never even heard that. Yeah. You have to understand, I grew up in a very wealthy, yeah. white, upper class neighborhood no. my whole life. Yeah. Sheltered, mm. white Christian, typical mm. American kid. Yeah. So I had never heard of these things. Yeah. So, uh, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to me with a perfect da'wah. Allahu Akbar. And what did he start with? Mm. Nature. He talked Neg about okay. the nature in the Quran, yeah. the, the creation of Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala, mm. the perfection Rububiyah. of the universe, yeah. you know, this and that. Mm. And that. And that really affected me. Yeah. You know, look at the sun, it's 93 million miles away, and mm. the moon is 208,000 miles away. Wow. But yet they, mm. they come together, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, that amazed me, mm. you know. So, him and I met uh, out in the yard frequently, mm. matter of fact, every time. Mm. And uh, his name was Omar, and he was actually uh, Turkish. Okay, wow. And, and he was in for white collar crime, computers. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Subhanallah. Yeah, we talked. And uh, long story short, he ended up showing up with the Quran. Mm. And we had made it, both of us made it to medium security at that time. Mm. So he said, oh, I'm going to give you a book. Mm. You better respect it. Subhanallah. You better take care of it. Mm. I'm going to give it to you. This is our holy book. It's called the Quran. Mm. I was like, okay. Mm. So, long story short, I went back to my cell with the Quran, opened it up, and the first thing I did was go to the index. Mm. It searched up names. Mm. Abraham, Moses, uh, Nuh, yeah. no. Adam, Jesus. And no. I said, hold on. This is like the Bible. Yeah. Mm. And I, I kind of became, oh man, this is the same thing. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, I thought it might be some... A thousand and one Arabian Nights. Was okay. I didn't, I didn't know, man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Was completely clueless. <laughs> Allah Akbar. So I opened it up, and the, and the first surah that I read was mm. Al Hakam al Takafi. Mm. Hatta Zurhum al Maqadir. No. And I just, that's me. Yeah. The way Sub I was raised. Subhanallah. That's me. Subhanallah. And so, you know, I read it, and I read it, and I read it. And my cellmate, he was down for a double murder, a dope case. Wow. Really nice guy. Uh, he like tapped me one time and he was like, hey man, time to go to dinner. Mm. I've been reading that book all day. Mm. And I looked at the time, like I had been reading the Quran for like seven hours. Subhanallah. And I was just, Allah I was Akbar. into it, you know, yeah. because I wanted to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My nafs was just like, yeah. read man, just, mm. just keep on going, keep mm. on going, see mm. where this goes. Allahu Akbar. So long story short, uh, Omar came out in the, in the, uh, on the yard and he's like, look, why don't you fly a kite, meaning you know, write a permission notice, mm. and come to me with Juma. Come mm. to me. Come yeah. with me. Allah Akbar. And uh, I said, yeah, why, why not? Mm. And uh, he had made a lot of ground with me. He, he had a lot of progress with me. Yeah. And as a Christian, I would find myself fighting back. Mm -mm. Because what is this religion that's yeah. now irresistible to me? Yeah. Subhanallah. Why is this happening to me? Yeah, this yeah. is not supposed to happen. Yeah, and I would Allah fight him. I would yeah. fight him. I would fight him. No, no, no. The Bible says this. Mm. And he completely destroyed me. Subhanallah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where to go. I didn't know yeah. what to say. Allah Akbar. So I just gave up. Yeah. And so I went to Juma with him. And the first thing that I heard is the Adhan. Mm. And I just thought, Subhanallah, that sounds so nice. It, uh, it, it went to the heart. Mm. And so... Basically, he said, look, listen, I'm, I'm going to, you're going to sit down with us, but when we get up to pray, mm. uh, and, and he said, you know, what's basically going to happen is, this is like Sunday church, uh, you know, he's going to get up, he's going to talk, he's going to make a khutbah, mm. and we're going to pray. <clears throat> I said, uh, okay, this, this, does the preacher or the imam, mm. does he read from a book when he prays? Mm. And he said, no, mm. uh, this, this imam has memorized the Quran. I like that. I said, no. <laughs> this book? Yeah. This big, he has it all? No. no. <laughs> it's like, not only him, mm. millions of people memorize the Quran. Subhanallah. Mm -mm. It hit me. Yeah. Wow. As a Christian, you don't memorize Bible verses. Right. Okay, John 3.16, God's one other than all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the popular ones. Yeah, right. But That's for true. a man to memorize the whole Quran, Subhanallah. I was impressed. Wow. Big time. Wow. And so... It came time for, for us to, for, for them to pray because mm. I wasn't a Muslim. Mm. 
And uh, he said, okay, wait over here. We're going to line up and pray, and you just kind of, you know, be to the side. Yeah. I said, okay. And I saw these, you know, these huge, huge men, mm. you know, when they made their takbir al-ihram. They, they turned into slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Humble. Wow. Sure. Wow. And I just thought, and I I got up from my place. I wanted to see this. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too curious. I yeah. have to know. Yeah. So I went to the front row on the side and I kind yeah. of, <laughs> I wanted to see it. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see their face. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's a battle lot. But the thing that pushed me over, mm. Allah, mm. the thing that did it for me, because yeah. Omar had already convinced me. Yeah. But I was still. Yeah, yeah. The heart wasn't all there. Yeah. You're right. But the thing that did do it mm. was when I saw them going to sujood. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When I saw that for the first time, yeah. Khalas, that's it. Mm. I have never in my life seen mm. ibadah mm. until today. Subhanallah. They washed themselves. They purified themselves. Mm. They read from the holy book. Yeah. And now they put their faces on the ground. Subhanallah. Into complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Allah Akbar. And I just, that was it. Mm. For me, that was it. Yeah. And so they prayed, and they were done to the prayer. Then Omar comes over to me automatically and says, what do you think? Yeah. And I said, something out of ignorance, because I didn't know. I was in prison. I was around people yeah. that weren't like me. Yeah. There was no white people. Mm -mm -mm. Not even one. Subhanallah. And I said something out of ignorance. I said, uh, I don't know what I have to do to become Muslim. I know yeah. I'm white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to be a Muslim today. Allah Akbar. You have to show me yeah. how to become a Muslim. Mm. Because it's irresistible to me. Wow, wow. And subhanAllah, the brother were like, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Mm. And so we got in a circle. Yeah. And I said my shahada. October, SubhanAllah. October 1991. Allahu Akbar. And I've been keeping it pushing ever since. Allahu Akbar. Allah, you better speak. Assalamualaikum class with a bat. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That's how it started. Wow, wow. 28 years ago. Subhanallah. And it's a ni'mah. Yeah, it is. It's a great blessing. Well, you know, <clears throat> what's interesting, and we, we shared this uh, prior, we are talking about uh, some of those old war stories, and I mentioned, uh, I said, hey, uh, do you remember, and of course you didn't remember the story, <laughs> but I want to mention this, because it reminds me of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about... Uh, you know, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that two men, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs at two men. Okay, and they're, and they're al-qatul al-maqtul. You know, the one who is killed and the one who kills. And so this was between um, uh, a Muslim and a non-Muslim. And the non-Muslim kills the Muslim. And then the Muslim, uh, then the non-Muslim, he eventually becomes a believer. And then he is martyred in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I recall a story, we were sitting at the masjid. You don't remember this, but I remember very well. And because uh, you were a hothead back in those days. And you, you still got a little heat. Oh, you all right. You all right. You all right. So, uh, so then uh, this, uh, uh, there, or anyway, there was, a, there was a guy, there was a painters. They were painting next door, next to the masjid. And I don't know what happened that you guys got into it. And you were a very, because I can remember us saying, Ali, Ali, chill. You know, come on, man. This is, you know, not that serious. And you almost got into it with this guy, this painter. And he's painting. Yeah. And I saw this guy years later and he became Muslim. He became Muslim. So, uh, you know, that, that's the ni'mah of Islam. You know, we don't know who and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to guide someone. So let me ask you, uh, you talked about how you, alhamdulillah, you remain Muslim. We've seen a lot of people from our, our crew, in a sense, you know, that have left Islam. What do you think is the thing that helped you to stay Muslim? What, you know, we've seen brothers, I mean, some brothers, they were, they were gangsters in, the, in Jahiliya. They came to Islam, but then they left quickly. Or others, they had some years in, and sisters, we can, you know, it's countless that have left yeah. Islam. Yeah. What do you think blessed you? How, how do you think, uh, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored you uh, you know, what means do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to help you to stay a Muslim? Because it's not, it's not always easy. You know, it's rough out here, especially when there's not a lot of knowledge. Yeah. We have zeal. Naam, tafadl. I think that, first of all, I have to give credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy. Aki, Aki. No. Uh, 
that is the main reason. But the 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 other major reason is probably seeking out and mm, I like that. I mean, subhanAllah, you can have a good heart, you can have good intention. Yeah. But if you're not really seeking in No. You don't really you don't have any guidelines in which to live your life. Yeah. You know, if you don't have knowledge of fiqh. Yeah. Uh, or aqidah. Aqidah is essential. Of course. And I think a lot of people that get into the religion of Islam. Yeah. They, some of them go for the brotherhood. Yeah. Some of them go for, you know, subhanAllah, maybe it's a phase or maybe they really believe. Yeah. But then they kind of, as, as converts, we kind of just hang out at the masjid like, yeah. Now what? Yeah. Okay, we're all together. We're going over here. We're going out to lunch and we're meeting for Juma. Okay, but then what? Yeah. Then what? Yeah. And this is where uh, knowledge of Islam is essential. Yeah. You, you got to, you have to have some type of boundary. Mm. In which to live your life. Yeah. And if you don't have that, you're gonna go nowhere quick. Of course. Uh, and that's based on knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, especially the internet. Yeah. I mean, if there's so much, you can be led astray on the internet so easily. Yeah. Like a lot of us did. Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of trash out there. Yeah. But we as we, why I personally fell into that. Yeah. Was, I didn't know any better. Right. I, I'm a revert. Can you share with us what what you, if you don't mind, uh, a little bit of what you fell into? I didn't mention anything about I, your story, but yeah, I fell into extremism. Okay, okay. Uh, although it was it was all talk and it was yeah. just the mindset. Yeah. Um, I fell into extreme. You have to. I think it was uh, Sheik Faisal. Okay, okay, we, Faisal. I, yeah. I fell into that. Yeah. Because I was straight out of the penitentiary. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you remember Sheikh uh, Ahmed Ahmed Kabir, a big uh, bodybuilder. That was my man. Ah, that was my Kabir. guy. I don't remember. I can't Big, remember. Huge from Tacoma. And so, I probably, if I saw him, I just can't remember so him. Yeah. He was like, listen, 20 22nd in Cherry, we got this place that we meet up. Oh, because he invited you to the community. Yeah, to, okay. to uh, Imam Fahim. Okay. Okay. So I didn't know anything about Islam. Yeah. Allah Akbar. Really at that time. SubhanAllah. So when, I, when we got there, somebody was selling, I think it was, you know, you know who. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was selling Sheikh Faisal. Cassettes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was, I picked up like four. I was like, let me see. Yeah. Just let me see. I don't know. Yeah. And this character was talking about Takfir and, you know, he's this, he's that. Yeah. You know, that was making all kind of yeah, wild yeah, yeah. claims. Yeah, yeah. And it made me feel as a revert, am I really a real Muslim? Yeah. Uh, I think I we all know. went there. I went through that listening to those tapes too. Yeah. Like this guy's talking about something. Yeah, on a whole different and level. And I'm thinking Islam is all peace. <laughs> I just joined Islam. <laughs> and I didn't know anything at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me see what this guy is talking about. Yeah. So I did. Mm. And I got into it. Yeah. And I fell into it. Yeah. And that was a problem. I have to understand, again, I can't stress it more. Yeah. When reverts enter, in, enter, enter into Islam. Yeah. We really have to be around the right people. Yeah. We That's really right. do. Because mm. we can just get led astray like that. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. So it wasn't until, you know, alhamdulillah, I got rooted in aqidah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and, I, and I really started to say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to learn from a teacher. Yeah. A living teacher. I'm going to sit with him and I'm yeah. going to see what he says. I'm, I'm not even talibad. Yeah. I'm just a normal guy trying to do the best that I can. Alhamdulillah, Allah, you're welcome. And so you're welcome. sometimes that's enough. Yeah. It's, it's enough to do that. But a lot of reverts, they get online and, okay, let me see what Islam is. And, oh, man, there's there's so many traps for them. Yeah. Waiting for them everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, if it's the, 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 the like the extreme Sufis. Yeah. Or, you know, the extreme uh, Khawarij, like yeah. ISIS type of things. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. It's readily available. It's true. And reverts just fall into it. Yeah. Well, what do you, uh, you know, because we, we, we felt that firsthand, we saw a lot of uh, individuals, a lot of brothers went down because of that, you know, brothers got involved in all kind of crazy stuff, and brothers went to prison for that, got locked up, <clears throat> um, some later became perhaps informants, so, you know, what would you say, you know, how do you think you, you really escaped that? You know, what I mean, for you, what what caused you to really rethink 
getting involved because I remember debating and arguing with some of the brothers because I had freshly come back from Yemen and brothers weren't really accepting that. The first thing they wanted to hear, you know, what Anashids did you bring? And I was like, man, I got some Arabic tape, Sheikh Mukbil, and they like, you know, oh, Bin Baz is a monafic, uh, Uthameen's a hypocrite, and this one's this. I was like, Aki, you can't even listen to those guys. You don't even have the language. What are you talking about? So how do you think you escaped? Because brothers, you know, we know we could talk about many war stories, brothers carrying yeah. their swords around, yeah. uh, brothers, you know, strapped doing, up, and, and strapped up yeah. doing all kind of crazy stuff. All, look at all the war stories we could talk about. Yeah. But, you know, how, how do you think you... you you know, that, that, of course, first and foremost, we know it's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You escaped from that because of the ni'mah, you know, and you said, you know, the aqidah and learning, going back and relearning. What else, you know, anything else that pushed you to get away from that stuff and that could be an influence for our, well, one our of them youth? Is, one thing is I, you see what stays and you see what goes. You mm. see the people that are leaving Islam. Mm. And that, but one of the major reasons, I mean, I'm, I'm not just saying this. Yeah. We saw you in Saudi Arabia Allah Akbar. getting it. Subhanallah. Getting deen. MashaAllah. For real. Subhanallah. Not on the internet. Mm. Sitting with Mashaikh. Mm. Actively learning for Mashallah. close to two decades. Mm. We did see that. Mm. Uh, other people kind of like, eh, you know, that's 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 what he's doing, but mm. you know, I started thinking Islam is forever. Mm. And, uh, and the people that are leaving mm. Islam mm. were the people that were mm. the most extreme. Yeah, subhanAllah. From what I saw. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm uh, There's a lot of brothers that are still on their deen, you know. Iman fluctuates, it goes yeah, up and down. Yeah, of course. But you have people leaving Islam completely mm. that were about that life back in the day. Yeah, But they right. aren't anymore. Right, subhanAllah. You know what subhanAllah. I'm saying? Yeah, 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 of so, course. So, I mean, the truth remains. How Allah. it remains, it yeah. establishes itself. Yeah. And it goes nowhere. Yeah. So... As, as, a, as an average Muslim, mm. I did see that. Yeah. And so I, I really kind of, is this is this life really for me? Is this type of life really for me? Mm -mm. Uh, I, I don't understand. If I was a, a non-Muslim and somebody told me that I was a dirty Catholic. Yeah. And I was this and I, I was you know, yeah. a, a wrongdoer. Yeah. I would, I don't want to listen to you, man. Yeah, right. I don't want to listen to nothing that you say. Yeah. It, whether it's about Islam or not Islam. Mm -mm. We're not talking, man. Yeah. We might, we might, yeah. We might fight. Yeah, we right. We might come to blows. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> I started thinking, something has to change. Yeah, because that was kind of the Tao that was being propagated. It was yeah. very aggressive. I can yeah. remember. Militant, and, you know, it's either with us or against us. Or, yeah, it, and his really yeah. Close-knit type of community. And it, mm -mm. This isn't right. Well, the Baya. Yeah, man. Did you ever read the Bayah? No. Okay, you I didn't did. take it. Yeah. I was around Sheikh Emil yeah, yeah, Emil Alameen in yeah, yeah. Ohio for the Riyadh. Okay. I had okay. met him actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him too several yeah. times and, and of course the others who came to the community. Right. And we know all the brothers a majority of the brothers in the community had the Bayah. So right, right. that's interesting. Yeah. What what would you advise uh you know, because now we have a lot of our East African youth here, so this is a little bit different than the revert experience, but a lot of them they want to taste the street, they want to act hard. They, they're acting crazy with nonsense, loking up, bucking up, getting arrogant. And, and I'm not belittling our East African youth, but I'm just saying there's a lot of these youth that have families, they have parents, they have, they're not cut like that. They're not from that, but you see with the arrogance, as you recently had an experience yeah. where you had to lay somebody on his back yeah. in, uh, <laughs> in a halal restaurant. In a halal restaurant with Lama Sa'an. Tell us about that and tell us what your advice is to these kind of youngsters. Because the youngsters need to hear something to get, you know, to wake up, man. They're, no. they're getting killed. They're in gangs. They're tripping. What's Not happening? Yeah. Take it. Take it from me. Yeah. Not yeah. just one person. Yeah. If one, there's nothing in that life. Mm. There's nothing in that life. How many times do you want me to say it? Yeah. There's nothing in that life. Mm. That, I mean, it sounds so cliche. Yeah. You end up in a grave or yeah. you end up in, in jail. Or yeah. You end up, there's nothing in it. Mm. I've been in prison for three years of my life. Yeah. I've yeah. been on 24-hour lockdowns. I've been in with killers, real mm. killers. Yeah. Yeah. Real killers. Yeah. Not talking about it and talk about it and, yeah. and lyrics and stuff. Yeah. And nonsense like this. Yeah. It gets real and it gets real really quick. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing in it. Mm. It's all temporary. Mm. The risk is not halal. Selling dope, it's, it's not halal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand the and appeal. And there's no barakah. Yeah, you're right. I don't understand the appeal. Yeah. 
Yeah. What what's happened to your hearts? Yeah. Why mm. you have something? I I came from disbelief to belief. Yeah. And you were grown with belief, raised in belief, but you prefer kufr mm. and darkness. Mm. I don't understand. Subhanallah. I've seen that other side of the coin. So yeah. Of you. Yeah. A lot of us have. Yeah. Yeah. I, what I would say mm. is is really number one. Mm. Fix your heart. Mm. Do taskia. Yeah. Really see why your heart prefers this street life. Mm. I don't get it. There's nothing in it. You, you want to die? Mm. Upon that? Yeah. Subhanallah. Upon that, Akhi. That's what's so sick. I mean, come on. Yeah. You, we, we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been on the streets. We know yeah. what it's like. Yeah. I've been in prison. Mm. I don't get it. Yeah. I went to prison to find us man. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And it was Na'ma. in the strangest places, but yeah. that's how I had to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, you're going to end up in prison if somebody doesn't put a, a whole clip in your face. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's a matter of time. Yeah. Because there's always young lions mm. wanting to get rank over you, mm. wanting to get what you have. Yeah. And it'll happen. Yeah. If you go to prison, you're lucky. SubhanAllah. You're lucky. Mm. So I would advise them to really fix their heart. Mm. And to, number one, again, I keep on coming back to it. Yeah. Aqeedah. Aqeedah, aqeedah. Mm. Get to that aqeedah yeah. so you know all of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. You know all of who Allah is and who He isn't. Yeah. Really form a relationship with your with your Lord. SubhanAllah. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Forget the women, forget the money, forget the cars, yeah. forget the yeah. Get that relationship with mm, Allah subhanahu mm, wa mm, ta'ala. Mm, mm, That's mm. what I would say. Yeah. Jazakallah really. khair. Allah yeah. yubarak fiqh, Allah yubarak fiqh. I, I think you know, some of these youth, they're hearing that. They're hearing that from their parents, some of those things. Fix your heart, get yourself together. But you know, you you know, uh, you know, it's like you being <clears throat> grown up in the church. For them, it's the same thing. You know, if you're in a Somali family or you're in an Oromo family or whatever, <clears throat> and you you know your parents are Muslim and they migrated and they came to this land, but you grew up here, you don't identify with your parents. You have, uh, and then you have this distractions of this new culture. Yeah. Like as we. Uh, T- tell us about what happened to you the other day. I'm not gonna put you on. You don't have to get all the details in some of the that, language. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and and this shows what where, where our youth uh, they they get a little. Some of the youth become arrogant. They're misguided. They're not. They're not. You know, they need wake ups. Maybe this youngster got a, a lesson. He got a lesson. Maybe did. But I hope it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But yeah. we hope. Uh, you know. You know, their the mentality is is gone. The hearts are gone. So how do they, you know, how do you, when your heart is gone, a lot of people, I think it takes an experience getting locked up. It takes getting beat down. It takes getting shot. And yep. then they're favored by Allah from that to learn a lesson. Some, they never learn the lessons. They go to the next stage, they're killed. Right. Okay. What? Uh, share just this little limited war story because this happened now. This wasn't like back in the days. It's about six months ago. Yeah. Okay. This is six months ago. Okay. Before I COVID. To, I just went to a restaurant. And, okay. Uh, I was, I was waiting for my food actually. Yeah. And so I was out in the car listening to a lecture. I left my car on. Yeah. Battery drained. Mm. Uh, went to turn on my car. It was, it was dead. So I went to go get a jump mm. at my cable set up and everything. So I went to this, this, uh, I'd say he's about 23, 25 years old. Okay. He was sitting in his car. I, I believe he was Somali, uh-huh. maybe Ethiopian. Maybe. Okay. Okay. And uh, I said, uh, hey, excuse me, man. Uh, can I get a jump? Yeah. And he kind of looked at me and said, hey, don't talk to me, man. Mm. You, don't, you, you don't know me. You don't, you, you don't ask me questions. SubhanAllah. And I just... <laughs> you know me, man. Yeah, you know I know me. you. I know you, I'll, man. I'm like... <laughs> Okay, this guy doesn't know me. Okay, uh-huh. no problem, no problem. And it, and he gets out of his car. Mm. He stands up out of his car. And he said, "Yeah, yeah, that, and, that, and that's right, that's right. Don't talk to me. You don't ask me questions. Subhanallah. This is my street, and this is lay lay lay." And he said some explicits we don't need to repeat yeah, here, but yeah, know, yeah. And, and he and, and I told him, I said, "Listen, you know, I think that you're a Muslim. Uh, so let's just get our food and go. Yeah, let's just get our food and go. Yeah." And uh, so he knew that I was a Muslim. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that he was a Muslim. Yeah. He didn't let up. Subhanallah. So I went to my car and he followed me. La ilaha illallah. And so, you know, I kind of got in my stance and I, and I kind of posted up. And I, yeah. And I did, you know, square up. But I yeah. was like, listen, yeah. man, I, I want to be ready, you know, like yeah. I'm about to. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I told him. I'm on you, I man. Said, 
bro, yeah. if you come in my zone, yeah. I'm going to launch one of these on you, man. Yeah, yeah, okay? right. And you, you're going to feel me. Mm. Trust me. And he said, yeah, 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 what you, what you, what you, what you want to do? What you? Post it up. So I don't. Move it. Mm. Don't come in. Don't do it, man. I'm about to launch it, man. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. And he came in, and I slipped him. I just slipped him, and bah! I gave him one. Yeah. Right to right to the side of his mouth. Subhanallah. And he, sack of potatoes. He, 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 went, off. <laughs> he went all the way, man. He yeah, just yeah. Well, Allah is dead. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but I did feel threatened. Yeah. He did. He, he's launched on me. Yeah, first. of course, of course. So being like, you know, I, I just want to defend myself. Yeah. And so, uh, you know. I got him with the one hitter quitter. Yeah. I gave him a nap on the pavement for a minute. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, may Allah preserve the idea. I, I really didn't want to do that. You know? Yeah, of course not. I'm, but it could have been a good, something good for him. And then, you know? I mean, and I, and I want to answer the other question that you said. Yeah. I uh, asked is, uh, yeah, some people do need a wake up. I yeah. would have never, I believe, Allah Allah, I would have never been exposed to Islam. Mm. If I didn't go to prison. Mm -mm. Because I had never heard of it before. Subhanallah. Ever. Subhanallah. Yeah. It was all Christian. It was yeah. Christian life. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, the, the youth is really... I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's in it for them. Yeah. Uh, every, every, everything is temporary. Yeah. Everything will be folded up. Yeah. In a scroll by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that you see, everything that you enjoy in life. Yeah. Uh, everything is temporary. Mm. We're seconds away from the grave. Mm. So what's it all about? Yeah. Chasing mm. chasing women and chasing money. Yeah. You always have money. <clears throat> yeah. Because Allah is al razaq No. You're so. always going to be provided for. Yeah. But prefer that halal. Yeah. Prefer that halal risk, you know. Subhanallah. I don't, I don't get it, Shaykh Khalid. I don't, well, I don't get it why they yeah are. yeah well I, you know i think if we if we look at it in another way in that uh, this is not praising and giving them credit but this is pointed to the fact that when we were that age we probably would have reacted somewhat similar to someone's dawah yep. you know what i mean we you know it, they it, their experience is similar to the way we were raised in the church okay we were left with something of our faith, you know, you always had a concept of rububiyah, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believed that, you never stopped believing that there was a God. Yeah. But, you know, you lived your other life. You still got into stuff, you got caught up, and what have you. So, I think they are just, you know, you know our general advice, I guess, to the youth <clears throat> is that they need to begin to find themselves, that they need to uh, be active in making those changes and i think us as adults we need to be going to give them their share that experience yeah of course to go to go we need outreach because they're not being uh they're not really being reminded as they are you know and there there isn't anything that's significant other because you know here in seattle washington state we're losing a lot of east african youth we're yeah. losing a lot of the somalis a lot of the ethiopians they're killing each other they're Chams fighting too. each other and the chams yeah. yeah they were here prior to that and they, uh, yeah, so a lot of our youth, uh, you know, the migrant youth, and of course, unfortunately, we don't even have many youth because we don't have a lot of reverts here. But, uh, but still, you know, the youth in general are all going through this, this danger. And so yeah. we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us and guides them and forgives us and forgives them and Amen. blesses us to be a source of good and not evil. And may Allah ta'ala, you know, raise you up in righteousness for your, uh, your assistance and you're your, your sitting in your interview. <laughs> Me and my man Ali, we go back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the listeners. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And until the next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.